Praise God. <clears throat> I do want to remind you that we do have online giving and text text giving uh, now. If I can get your attention, please. That seems like y'all louder than I am back there. Amen. Uh, again, if uh, we do have text giving now uh, through Realm, so if you decide you want to give, you can give at any moment. <laughs> and uh, we do have online giving as well. So you were able to do that that way. Uh, praise God. I do have something I would like to communicate uh, to you. You can be seated for a minute. Thank you very much, though. Uh, we've been trying to plan uh, the year. Um, our, what we're going to be doing if, uh, is to um, find better ways of broadcasting and communicating the vision of this congregation uh, and outside of that, the vision of Antioch, the Apostolic Church. Um, and so um, you're going to be seeing some, some new things uh, by way of promotion and um, communication. Um, and uh, the purpose of this, again, uh, you'll be seeing things on the screen. You'll be seeing some, some videos. Uh, we have new people coming in every Sunday. Every Sunday. It's, we've, I think we've had someone at least, actually, I would say two or more people baptized every single week for the last couple of months. <laughs> Uh, multiple people receiving the Holy Ghost, things of that nature. And while you have new people and uh, you have people who come and receive an experience, we don't want people just to have an experience. We want to make it a lifestyle. And so um, we need to make sure we do a great job in communication. A lot of times people are more visual than audible. In other words, uh, they tend to respond by sight than what they hear. And so we're coming, coming up with some new ways. We have, uh, we're going to have a, a pamphlet, a trifold pamphlet to kind of uh, show exactly who we are. And, uh, and where we're going, and what we're doing as a church. And we're working on, on those things, and it will be communicating, uh, you know, how we go about um, who we are in terms of home Bible studies, small groups, and things of that nature. And so uh, we want to promote that. We have a new, a, a new, uh, new life process that we've just started and instituted. Uh, we have a, a process also for transferees. We ha we've had several, actually a number, a handful of transferees that have come in and we want to get people on the track of discipleship and development. And uh, secondarily to that, and on a track of membership. Amen. And so we, we've been doing that. And, uh, but we need your help in that. We'll be explaining that more. We want to have you, do we want to have the church involved? Because, uh, you know, it's one thing for things to come from the pulpit. It's another thing for it to come from the pews. And so uh, we have greeters out there at the door. We call hostesses, but they're greeters. But we, we, want, we want to have some seat greeters. And so each and every one of us will play a major role on Sunday mornings, being a seat greeter and helping someone that's sitting next to us or behind us or in front of us to get connected, not only with God, but with the church. And so uh, each and every one of us can play a part in that. You don't necessarily have to be uh, given a title 
or position. Uh, we want to make everyone get everyone in, involved in that. Additionally, or in addition to that, uh, we are, <clears throat> each year we try to have a, for lack of better terms, a curriculum uh, and offer up things in terms of training, um, ministerial training, and I say ministerial, not licensed ministers, I'm talking about for the body, so the body can minister. We're talking about uh, edification of the body, and so we, we want to equip the people of God. And so on Thursdays, we, it's more so equipping, equipping classes, training, um, and, and so it's not necessarily a, a church service. It's, it's uh, not only just growing in the word, growing for yourself as far as Christian character, but also developing your life to be used in God. And, and so we're looking at ways, better ways to do that. And, and, and so um, the last thing is that we want to have training for leaders or those aspiring to be in leadership. And one of the things we're looking at is the schedule. We understand that we are busy people. And so the idea is to not just throw a date out or time out and, and not to think nothing about the people, but to uh, probe, if you will, um, the people and find out, okay, what will work best? How can we maximize participation? And so with some of, some of our, uh, the leadership or the equipping, or I would rather say the impartation, we want to have more impartation than just teaching. Uh, and so with that, uh, we have a choice between Thursday nights, which I prefer to not to do that. I prefer to keep that equipping and, uh, and, and not necessarily di discipleship. We, we're doing our discipleship a little differently, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But we want to do sa save Thursday nights for equipping and then uh, have, when we do training and impartation and things of that nature, we want to have that on a Friday or a Saturday. Now, I, I know some people work on Saturday morning, some of the leaders. And so, you know, some, there has to be a give and take. We're going to have to give somewhere. And so the idea is I'm, I really would like to find out uh, as far as uh, how would you say the majority. We, we, we need to come up with a, a, date that, a day that we're going to use more so than other days for our impartation, things of that nature. And we can do a Saturday. People hate to give up their Saturdays. We had prayer on Friday. I don't mind using some of the Fridays, but the bottom line is if we use a Friday night, those teams that come on Friday, they're going to have to pray on Saturday. <laughs> There's no way of getting around it. Uh, and I thought about Monday as well, but I know a lot of you, some of you teach Bible studies or whatever. And so, again, that's somewhere we're going to have to have that. It's not like every week. So what I need from you, you are in leadership. I need you to email me tonight. Everybody say tonight. tonight. Is there any leaders that's not in here that's downstairs doing something? I need you to email, huh? Who can I get to make sure they get this? I need, I need, I need you to email me tonight if Saturday night or Saturday evening sessions will be a problem for you. where well, you can't make a Saturday evening session for uh, um, impartation and training. Again, this is for leaders and those designed to be in leadership. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem having it on a, a, sa a Saturday in the daytime, but I do know some, some of you guys primarily work some Saturdays. And some of our leaders and some of our licensed ministers work on Saturdays, so I want to be considered, and we need to have this. Ministers need to be trained. Not just equipped, but they trained. I just said, I didn't get the time yet. Saturday evenings, okay? Saturday evenings. Uh, I know some people work um, up at the four or five. I'm, I'm, I, I'm considering having uh, these training sessions at 6 p.m. Uh, normally they will go from 6 to 7 or 6 to 8. 
And uh, that gives people who work on, in the, on Saturdays the opportunity to get off and get to these sessions. So I need to know, again, if you are a leader, I'll say this again, in any type of capacity, leading in the ministry, if you are assisting in leading, uh, being groomed for leadership, I need you to text me if you can't make it on a Saturday, if we decide to have a, the training session on a Saturday evening at 6 o'clock, that you can't make that. That's not going to work for you. All right? So I, as a matter of fact, I don't have a problem. You go get your phone and text it right now. <laughs> uh, so, but if you, I don't need to know if you can. I just need to know if you can. I don't need everybody texting me and emailing me. If you don't text me, that means you can make it. So when I hold it, I don't want any excuses. <laughs> All right? I think, do we have any, we only have one person that's out that's senior leadership, right? All right? Or two. So, and I know that schedule. So if you can't, leadership or desire to be in leadership. I'll say that again. Leadership or desire to be in leadership. All right? Saturdays, 6 p.m. We'll see how that works. And then we'll go from there. Praise God. One, that, that last thing I mentioned to you, um, now it just escaped me. Um, maybe to come back. Oh, um, this new life in discipleship. And so when we have uh, new people coming in for new life, um, and transferees, we have a discipleship. Now, we're not going to do our discipleship like we did before on um, Thursday nights. What we did in times past, this is, a third, this is Sunday night, so I'm talking to the church. All right? I don't need to have some program going on. This is Sunday night. Uh, what we did in times past is we, we had the discipleship uh, sessions or classes and breakout sessions on Thursdays. And we called that discipleship. Now, Thursday nights is for the church, for, again, for uh, equipping, whatever. Now, discipleship is individual. You can't have a discipleship class have everybody come together. That's not discipleship. And so um, we used it, but that's... It's not effective. If you got three people to come in and they get baptized, get the Holy Ghost, and you're trying to disciple them going through, you know, it, that's kind of difficult. Now, coming to a small group, you can say, well, they get discipled in the small group. <laughs> no, they get connected to the body and they grow in the, the small group. But if you don't, we don't get that word in them, some discipleship stuff that they, they you know, um, it's, you know, so we, we need that. So what we're doing is our structure, the way we're going to do things is a person come in, they get the Holy Ghost, get baptized. We want to get them in a Bible study, one of the home Bible studies. Who, and so after they get in that home Bible study, we transition them into those. It's a six-month course for discipleship. And it goes from uh, new life, Bearing fruit, Christian living, uh, uh, spiritual maturity, uh, my, my ministry, your ministry, mission, then modeling Christ. And so you bring them all the way up to that and, how, and it ends with them living a lifestyle that's pleasing to God. And so uh, you go through the, the, those uh, courses and everything else, but what we'll do, it will be done one-on-one. -on -one or two-on-one with a family, whoever that sponsor family, what we call now New Life Coach. And so they will do the discipleship stuff. So they'll do the, the Bible study, transition from home Bible study to discipleship. And then at that point, if they're not in a small group at that time, because sometimes people won't, don't want to give up all their days, and that's, you don't want to violate that. And so if they have multiple days that they're willing to do go to a Bible study and a small group that's fine they go to the Bible study and go to the small group after they do the Bible study they'll get the discipleship but if they can't do that they'll go from Bible study discipleship 
to small group. And so they go right to, to that next level in the small group and things of that nature. So the idea, we want them in a small group. We want them in a small group. Ideally, they'll go to the home Bible study and a small group, and that would be great. And that home Bible study will transition into the discipleship, and they'll stay in a small group. But if their time is limited and precious and valuable, and they don't want to give up certain days, and we're not going to push them, we'll transition them. And so the way that it will work, hopefully everyone will get what they need. And, um, and so that's how we're, we'll do that. And I'm just letting you know this process. Uh, you need to know what we're doing. Amen. So you can have an understanding. You can communicate and articulate and, um, and things of that nature. It's very important for that to happen. And I'm taking the time on a Sunday night to do this from the pulpit. We will make sure we disseminate this information, give you this, this information, have a way of broadcasting, like I said before, and promoting this so everyone can be abreast on what's going on and be educated on what's going on. We have to be in agreement and speak the same language. And so this is the core for the most part of this church, what comes on a Sunday night. And so I'm taking the time to communicate this, and, uh, and we'll, again, find other ways to communicate this. Amen. Praise God. Now, and I did all that. You may say that's all announcements. It's not all announcements. That's communication. That's communication. And, uh, I, you know, I, I don't think the pulpit is just a place to preach a sermon. So if you have your Bibles, you can get them out. Won't you stand, please? And I do know what time it is. I'm well aware of the time. If you can go to Acts chapter 20. I'm going to start at verse number 17, and I'm sorry I didn't give you. I think I gave you, I don't know if I gave you that verse of Scripture, so... You have to just kind of go along with that. Acts chapter, if I gave it to you, that's great. I don't, I gave you that one, Acts 17. I mean, Acts chapter 20, verse 17. All right, I, it's a last minute thing, so. Praise God. And from Miletus, he, speaking of Paul, sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And they were come to him, and he said unto them, you know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after, I'm sorry, after which, after what manner I have uh, been with you all these, at all seasons, sorry for that, I'm reading a very small print, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the land and weight of the Jews, and how that I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have, show, have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me. There, verse number 23, save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. 24. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I'm going to read number 24 again. All those things Paul was going through, he said, but, ne but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. Why? so that I might finish my course with joy and 
You had to put finish with this part and finish the ministry which I have received of the Lord. I want to preach or talk for a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. Let's finish what we've started. Antioch North, let's finish what we started. You can be seated. There have been things that I've started and um, for whatever reason, I did not complete it or finish it. I've uh, uh, had an e education and completed high school, had some college, but did not finish that four year, four years of college. Didn't finish it. I look back, sometimes I regret not finishing it. As there, I, I, I picked up the bass one time and began to fool with the bass and just never finished what I started. There, there are some things I've tried in life, things I've, I've wanted to do and uh, gave myself to it, and then it kind of fizzled out. And each and every one of us, we, I'm sure, have things in our life that, that yeah, nothing wrong, things are, that we started, and for whatever reason, we didn't finish it. And for some of us, some of these things haunt us and gnaw at us. And grade us to the point where it cripples us. Sometimes we feel defeated and deflated based on those things that we didn't finish. The almost. I, I've been given a ministry. You've been given a ministry in God, and we've been given, a, I believe, a, uh, an awesome, a great opportunity. And, and, and a lot of words and promises and things of that nature have been given, and dreams and prophecies and all that. And, and uh, <laughs> we, we, we must take into uh, account that just because something was given, it's not automatic that we're going to see it through the, to the end. We must have the, you know how it is, uh, there, there have been some things that I'm telling you what, when I went, I went in all the way. Amen. I mean, I was dedicated. I was committed. I was determined. But somewhere along the line, I dropped it and laid it there and left it there. And I know each and every one of us have things like that. And there's some things, it is okay that you didn't finish it. Amen. If your wife give you a project, finish the project. <laughs> and on the flip side, if your husband give you a task, finish the task. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah, it got real quiet, didn't it? It's not a one-way street. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Milton. <laughs> Praise God. But Paul, in his ministry, years of ministry, he had people like Demas, and he gave a whole list of people who went out with him. And they departed. They, they didn't finish the course. And yes. they left off for whatever reason. They had forsook God for the world. And God has given some great promises. That, and I, I'm so glad you're here tonight. I really just got direction for this, actually, between service today. And uh, Brother Middleton came into this town in 2000, 
or was it 96, 97, 98? 98, somewhere around there. And 98, and prior to Brother Milton coming, coming into this town, what's the Sister Valley's in here, is she? There she is. Sister, Sister Valley's mother was in Baltimore traveling all the way to Annapolis to go to an apostolic church. And uh, she would travel from Baltimore to Annapolis Sunday mornings and come back home and go back down there on Sunday nights and come back home and go back down there on Thursdays and come back home. And, and, and uh, this lady here got hooked up in her job with uh, someone that worked in Annapolis. And so she traveled to Annapolis from Baltimore to work and someone began to talk to her about Jesus because she was in Catholicism. And she went to go check the church out, and it was Antioch, the Apostolic Church. Now, it wasn't her decision. God was working some things. And so Sister Jones is traveling back and forth to Annapolis to go to an apostolic church. And I know that apostolic church is in Baltimore, but this was the church God had her connected to. Now, during that time frame, I'm living in sin. And I'm doing my own thing. And I don't want to be bothered with church. I can't stand church. But on the same token, I was hungry and desperate for God. Can I tell you, there are people out there, amen, that are on bar stools, amen, that are in clubs, partying and doing all sorts of things. And they don't really want a church, and they're so sick and tired of church and religion. But some of them are looking for God. They're looking for something real. Is there a real, true God out there? I want it. They're saying she was tied up in religion, and I don't know what changed her mind and to decide, hey, I, I need something more. I, I, I guess I'm going to kind of be, be facetious. I guess she got tired of kissing those statues and those rings. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if y'all know about the year. You get a guy coming, you kiss his ring and kissing the statue's feet. Huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what... Uh, that's what we do in Catholicism. Well, I, I'm not trying to be hard, and they don't have a problem with it. Amen. And I used to go to the Catholic Church, but I ain't kissing no. I wasn't kissing no feet and, and kissing no rings. I was drinking that that uh, wine, though. <laughs> After everybody. Now that I think about this, like I was crazy. <laughs> And so, back to what I'm talking about. <laughs> She's going to, I don't know what triggered it. But she ended up in the apostolic church all the way in Annapolis. And then she hooked up with Sister Jones, and now she's in Sister Jones' class. And, uh, Sister Jones, uh, and then she's pulling me along. And my sister's along. And so we end up in Sister Jones' house in a Bible study. Uh, well, just a, it was four of us. And then God says, I'm going to send a man to Baltimore. And, I, and that man initially was saying, no, that's, that's not me. <laughs> and God said, yes, you the man. You're going to Baltimore. God has a work. He has a ministry. He has souls that are going to be saved. And all that was going on, God was at work. God was starting a ministry. God was doing something. And let me tell you, and this man spent, oh, I, I, how many years he spent here and, and, and laying the ground and laying the foundation for what God would do and God would want to do, et cetera, et cetera. And now, I'm sure he would be disappointed. And I know she would be also. If we don't finish what was started. I am determined we're going to finish what God has started. We're not going to fold. 
We're not going to give in. We're not going to quit. <laughs> Amen. This is still going to be valuable to us. The best is yet to come. This is not rhetoric. And we have people in Baltimore City, Baltimore County, Harford County, Anne Arundel County. And I, 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 we have a, a Frederick, we have one, they don't come too often. God is at work. Amen. But there's a situation, there, there are problems, there are circumstances, there are difficulties. And I, for some of us, man, I'm telling you, 2019, I, some of us, 2019 was a, a whirlwind. And we, we're so thankful we got in 2020. Do I have anybody, and I have any witnesses in the house? I know some of you personally, you're looking at, I know some of your situations personally. I, you ought to stand on your feet and like, thank God for 2020. Hey, God has something better for me in 2020. I'm, I'm putting that behind. Won't you tell, none of those things are going to move me. I'm still here. I'm still in the church and I'm going to finish my course. I'm telling you, some of you, the devil's giving you his best shots. He sent all, everything your way. And you're still here. You're still a part. And so you might as well be determined. You know what? We are going to finish what we started. Now, you may not have started out strong. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. I'm determined we're going to finish strong. Don't you know uh, there is hope? Jesus said, I'm coming for a church uh, without spot, blemish, or wrinkle, or any such thing. You know what that tells me? Hey, the church is not going up. Oh, hallelujah. It's not going up as a ragtag, wishy-washy church. He said he's coming for a bride without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. Hey, hey amen. He's not coming to rescue us. He's coming to take us home. But let me tell you, we will be victorious and overcomers. He's not going to drag out carcasses. He's coming for a victorious church, a revived church. Revival starts today. And what I mean by that, well, we had revival already started. What I'm talking about, you can't, yesterday is gone. You can't have revival yesterday. <laughs> and maybe you were revived yesterday, but then you need revival today. And God has been moving. I, 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 sister, uh, we, we ought to put some of those numbers up on the screen. I don't know if you you the numbers lady. I, I mean, we had how many guests? You remember how many guests we had that? 350. 350 first-time guests last year. 350. You say, well, that's just a number. That's 350 people came in this door and heard the gospel. The 350, oh, hallelujah. They felt the presence of God. They may not have experienced that before. You say, where they at? I don't know where they at. I'm not worried about it. God knows where they are. And let me tell you something. God is able to work in their life and get them to the place he needs to be as long as we continue and finish the course. Like I shared in that funeral yesterday, I told these, those people that it was a funeral service where God began to work in my life, began to deal with me. It was someone, matter of fact, it was a, a worker, a lady, an older lady. I called, her mom, I called her like second mama. I didn't really know her that well, but she was a registrar, reg, registrar, registrar, uh, that's not right. Registered. She wasn't a registered nurse. What do you call those people sitting at the desk? 
That ain't that called a registration. <laughs> Registrant, it's another word. N not a cashier, she was in the hospital. She was a receptionist anyway, yeah. Yeah, you got it. But she's at the, the unit, the, 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 the unit, the station at the desk. You can tell I'm glad I've been out of that for a while. I don't remember what. But anyway, and, and so I would go by and everything else. And, but anyway, I called her second mom. And she would look out for me and everything else. And then she, she passed away. So I went to a funeral. I didn't really know her too well. But, uh, you know, I was sad. It was all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she had bloodshot in her eye. Next thing you know, she died. And it kind of affected me. I mean, I was doing my own thing, but see, God was working. So I went to the funeral. And, uh, you know, I kind of sat in the back. And I'm listening to the funeral, and I feel, I'm feeling sorry and sad for her and everything else. And, but next thing you know, God is moving on me. And I'm feeling this urge to go up to the front and just give my life to God. But it was like, it's like my feet was, was glued and I, 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 I want to do it. And, and it was a call and I don't know what religion, I don't know, as a matter of fact, it was at Mars Funeral Home and I don't, I, I don't know any of that. I don't know if the guy was preaching, he might have been preaching, Santa Claus is coming to town, I don't know. <laughs> All I know was God was moving on me, working on me, and, and I, I just wanted to go and just give my life to God, but there was something holding my feet. It was me, my flesh. But I'm telling you what, that day, no one else could see it. But on the inside, God was moving on me. And I knew I needed to do something. And it was within a, a space of I don't know how long, probably this, maybe a couple of years. But that was the first time that I opened up and responded to God like that. And I mean, church wasn't like that for me. I didn't do anything with it or whatever, but that's when God impacted me. Then next thing you know, it was just a little while longer. Uh, somebody had laid a track. It was, it was a, a, a dark day. It, it was the, very cloudy. And I mean, it was like a weird type. It just came out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh, is this the end? All right? And, and, and when, I, when that happened, I'm, I'm trying to run it out of, uh, out of the rain. And, and it was just dark, the cloud, it was like, like 3 o'clock in the daytime, and it was like dark like it was 12 midnight. I'm like, hey man, it's going to, and, and I'm, I'm running to get out of the rain. And just before I was ready to go through the door, I looked down, and it was a track. And I picked that thing up, and it was talking about end to end and all that. And, the, man, that thing scared me so bad. And, and it's like, it looked real spooky. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to get my life right. But you know what? God had me at the right place at the right time, the right stuff around me and everything else to get my attention. Can I tell you God is getting the attention of people out here? Yeah. And it doesn't matter what he's using. He may not be using a track. Amen. He may not be using a funeral home, but he's using some things to get people attention. And he's aligned us here at Antioch North. And God has aligned you here inside of this congregation. And God is positioning you to use you. And we're involved in the plan of God, but we must be determined we're going to finish what God has started. We just don't know what God is doing. And people, I tell you, I did that funeral and, and everything else, and I felt the Holy Ghost. And, and, um, and, but I knew God was doing the same thing he did to me at that funeral he was doing in some people's lives. And, and I wasn't trying to drag them to church. You got you to repent right now. You got to get back. No, you leave that. Let God, God sow the seed. And I believe some of those people at the right time, they're going to be in this building. On one of these pews, speaking in other tongues, going down in the name, worshiping like we worship. We got to be determined. God's going to finish what he started here. I remember a dream. Sometimes when people share dreams, it's almost like I had that dream. And I, I don't know, it was a dream that we were coming in somewhere, and I think you may have, you may have had a dream, Sister Middleton, where 
Y'all were leaving out. Of, it was a safari or whatever. The last one. And y'all were leaving out. And we were coming in and she was like, ah! you know, like, like my wife would do, right? And tell me if I'm wrong or whatever. And Sister Mills was shaking her head like, you don't know <laughs> what you can ready to go and get in. That's the gist of it, right? You can, you know, fix it all right next time you come and, and minister in the service. You heard that, hopefully. <laughs> I said you can fix it right the next time you come and minister in the service. Yes, like Mother's Day. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> And, and you, you can have Father's Day. So let it be written, so let it be done. Mother's Day, Father's Day. Put it in your calendars. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> there you go. We got, we got that covered. <laughs> I think that would be wonderful. I, I, I got it. Trust me. I got it. Yeah. God is on the move. And when God gets on the move, oh my God, any and all things are possible. Let's just pray right now, right here. Shanda Rahabahasata Manda Rahomonde Lekahamahasata Bahai. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Manda Rahamaha Shata Mahaya. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ. Mataresh Neleka Mahashanda Rehemeheke Shata Mahaya. Janita, God wants to finish what he started. Jesus name Brother Sister Bond <laughs> Janita sitting here on this pew tells me that God is not done God wants to finish what he started come on somebody Let me tell you something real quickly. See what you what, what you what you don't know is when that church and things that happened and every everyone went to different places. There was a list of names that were given to me uh, from Brother David Reaver, Pastor David Reaver. And it was a list of about nine people. And your name was on that list. And I, tell, I remember that name because it stood out. I didn't know who you were. And that's why I, when I told you last week uh, that, oh, man, this is precious to me. Because, oh, that was a group of people we've been praying for. Her name was on the list. I said, God wants to finish what he started. The devil is a liar. Come here, Sister Shalandra. Come here, Sister Shalandra. Sister Shalandra was another one. We, we, we said from day one, Hallelujah. she's one of them God is trying to get. Amen. And, and everything, as I talked to you about when, about seven years ago. <laughs> and he's like, boy, you don't know what you're talking about. I had nothing to do with you or your church. And you went up to Ohio, was it? And God 
sent her. Yeah, that was fine. God allowed her to go to Ohio. And God began to call her all the way from Ohio and say, this is where you need to be. She got connected with the bonds and said, this is where God wants you to be. It's God's house. It's God's purpose. It's not about this man and this ministry. It's about God's will. And look what God has done. We might as well let God finish what he started. One to two years later, there are more. Oh, hallelujah. I said there are more. Oh, somebody need to get a Lord a hand clap of praise. Somebody need to go take a lap. I said there are more. Come on, you've had a burden for them. Come on in Jesus' name. Stand up to your feet. Come on, it's not over. We got to allow God to finish what he started. Come on, Janita, you know what you feel is right. You need to stop listening to the wrong voice. You can feel it. This is what God is doing. Sometimes we don't like what we hear, but we know what we feel. You may not like what you hear sometimes, but I'm telling you what, you know what you feel. For some of you to always criticize in this church, always trying to find fault with this church. Come here, Colleen. Now, Colleen, I want to make sure I get it right. Colleen is from Jamaica, correct? She's been in Baltimore. How long have you been attending the church in Baltimore? Since 2004, she's been attending another apostolic church, right? She says to me a couple of weeks ago, I'm ready. Was that the words? Oh, what, what, you can tell me the words if I got it wrong. I'm ready, yeah, I'm ready to join. I said, what, do you, what does that mean? And with the talker, she said, I just feel like I've wasted so many years of my life. I, I wish I would have found this church a long time ago. I, was that your words? I want to get it right. Oh, See, while you're so busy complaining about certain things, there are some people that are out there that says, hey, this is the place I want to finish my race. This is the place I want to finish my course. We got to finish what God has started. I like the fact that Colleen, she, she waited for a few weeks. And she was checking this thing out. He's checking it out real hard. <laughs> and she was like, hey, I don't know. And she had some questions, and some people got all messed up and bent out of shape at the questions. I, it didn't bother me. He was like, hey, I got a question. I like that. Find out what you're getting into. She's like, hey, I want to know. She's like, well, why y'all do this? Why y'all don't do this? Why didn't, hey, I don't get offended by it. I'm going to tell you. You see, I believe that we can get everything out of this book. And if it's not directly in there, I guarantee you, I'm going to show you a principle. And I'm not saying we're perfect because that's no perfect. Organizations or group of people. But I want to be as close as possible. And then... If there's anything that's missing, God takes up the gap. But when that scripture says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself to them, for they watch for your soul, 
You know what that scripture tells me? If it's, if it's all the word, you don't have to submit to them because it's in the word. He said, obey them that had a rule over you and submit to them. Because there are some things that the one that, that, that's watching over your soul is going to ask you to do. Why? Because he's watching over your soul. And, and, and so you're going to submit to them. Now, if he's asking you to jump off a building, you know he's not watching over your soul. So you don't do that. But if he's telling you to do something, amen, so you can stay in the flock. So he can identify his sheep. Oh, hallelujah. Come on out here. So he says, come on. And, and, and that's Jesus. And we're going to follow Jesus. And you follow me as I follow Christ. And, and you decide, hey, I want to pick up something along the way. Go, go, go grab something. Maybe pick it up. She, she, yeah, there you go. Oh, he took it. <laughs> and that's like, oh, no, 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 no. You, I don't think that's good for you, you see. You don't want that. And you say, well, what's wrong with that? And I say, see, it's going to cause distractions in your life. It's going to cause you to lose your focus. And you say, I can make it in heaven uh, with that. That's not a sin. It doesn't have anything to do with sin. It can be something that causes you to lose your focus. And you get distracted. And then you end up going the wrong way. And I'm trying to plead with you. So I'm watching over your soul. It's not something that God said. But it's something that the preacher said that's watching over your soul. So you get that back to her. So everything is not necessarily written out in ink and spelled all right. Don't do this, do that. But some things, it's a matter of principle. Obey them that had a rule over you and submit to them. Now, I'm going to tell you everything we're going to tell you is going to be, is going to have something in the book. And if you have any questions for anything, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I will be glad to show it in the book. I, I don't want to have, there's no secrets around here. Glad to show it in the book. And so we follow. Come on. Come on. Jump down off there. Come on. Jump like down like Superman. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Because we're going somewhere. Right. Amen. And the more that you follow, and people see, when you start, you walk out door, you start seeing the lost crowd. You start saying, what is going on? And you start seeing people, come on, come on. Come on this way. Watch this. Just, just come on in. Come on in here. Come on in here. Come on in here. Come on. There we go. Can I get anybody else that want to get join this thing? Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. God is doing something now. God is doing something now. We're not going to quit because God is touching lives. More people are getting the revelation. More people are getting the understanding. More people are realizing, hey, they're going somewhere. I want to go where they're going. I want to be a part of what they're doing. God is involved in this. God is in control of this. God is working in this. God is moving here. I want to be a part of what God is doing. Come on, son. Somebody. We need to finish. We need to finish what God has started. Come on, hallelujah, all over the house. Uh, somebody lift up their hands to him. Uh, lift up your voices to him. Somebody say, finish what God has started. We're going to finish the work in Baltimore. We're going to finish the work that was started. If you're on board, I want you to come down to this altar real quickly. Come on, let's join down. Come on down. Amen. It's one thing to start something. It's another thing to be determined. We're going to finish it. We're not going out wishy-washy. We're not going out limp, uh, limp wrist. We're going out strong. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. This is 
Come on, you get them on. Come on, that's it. If you're on board, uh, there's some people God wants to use you uh, to reach and impact uh, their life. Uh, come on, hallelujah. It's not going to be perfect here. There's going to be some things, like I said this morning, that's going to be said uh, that's going to change your world, uh, that's going to rock your religion, uh, that's going to cause some, cause some uh, decisions in your heart and in your mind and in your life. But you must be determined God is involved, and I'm going to stay on board, and I'm going to finish. Come on. Come on, that's it. Come on, hallelujah. Somebody begin to pray. Somebody begin to worship. We're going to be determined. Amen. We're going to be stronger. In Jesus' name. Come on, in faith. Come God on, that's is it. Let's get your ball for in. us. God is on our side. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. Shaken, we will not be moved. Come on, that's it. Jesus, you are. Let's make here. a proclamation. We're gonna finish carrying our burdens, covering we're gonna our finish. shame. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. I will. Shake it. 
we will shout it out. Shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus, in a midst of fear, and we will shout it out, shout it out. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. We didn't take up off yet. Where you been? You're dismissed in Jesus' name.